In today's episode, we discuss one of the best inverted coasters in the country and how it made Carowinds a destination theme park. Welcome to Airtime Traveler. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Roller Coaster History Podcast. You are listening to Airtime Traveler. My name is Nathan Grace, and as always, I am joined by my wife and lovely co host. Hey, I'm Haley Grace. And thank you for tuning in to today's episode. How are, how are you doing? Hanging in there. <laughs> Hanging in there. <laughs> We have a four-year-old and a six-month-old, and just life is crazy. I'm a stay-at-home mom for both of them, so <laughs> it's a, it's just that I think that sums it up right there. <laughs> four-year-old and six-month-old, stay-at-home mom. It's a that's, party. Uh, that's all you need to know. <laughs> yep. Oh well, thank you for the. Awesome response to the the first yes, episode of the that season. That was awesome and crazy <clears throat> and all the things. Yeah, you all guys. The happy things. Yeah, already already breaking the record for the most listens we've had in a month is pretty awesome. So um, appreciate you guys in this. This is the second year in a row that you've blown the podcast out of the water with you know the the season opening. So. It's, it's just exciting to see you guys enjoying the show and other people continuing to find the show over time. And, uh, yeah, it makes makes us happy to find, you know, to that people are enjoying it and that right. you guys are enjoying what we do here. Because we have a lot of fun doing it. And well, this is what we do worth it, I think, too. Like, yeah. Like, well, we, lo- we love what we do, but, like, sometimes it's just, I don't know. Like, it's, it's hard for us to keep going if there's no one actually <coughs> listening to us. Yeah. So. I think we, we've always said that we would um, still do what we do if there were people listening, just because, we you know, we enjoy doing it. But, obviously, the whole point of a podcast is for people, people to actually listen. tune in yeah. and to enjoy what we have to share. So, um, so we would just appreciate the, the support and excited for the rest of season three and yeah. got lots of lots of great stuff coming so yeah, for sure. we also officially officially booked our first amusement park trip of the year Woo-hoo! um i guess technically I our first trip so was excited. when we went to i guess our technically our first trip was so city a few weeks ago for the fire and the hole opening but for getting technical <clears throat> That wasn't even, we weren't even there a full day. That was kind of just there for the event. So this is the first trip we're taking to go to a park and going to two new parks. And um, I think we we mentioned it in the last episode, but it is now official. So we're going to be going to SeaWorld Orlando, and that will be both of us going to SeaWorld Orlando. Yes. And then the day after will be Busch Gardens Tampa. I will be spending a full day there. Haley will be there for... A, a few hours. A couple hours. And then the full week after that, we'll be doing Disney with uh, our family, the four of us, and then also my parents and my brother will be will be doing that with them. So, yeah. so obviously, there will be three trip reports coming in the aftermath of that. One for SeaWorld, one for Busch Gardens, and then we'll do an, a, one to kind of encompass our whole Disney trip because we've, we've talked about Disney plenty on the podcast, and so yeah. there's... We don't need to go into every single day in detail. Like yeah. <laughs> we can just kind of talk about the new things and the things that have changed since last time and stuff like that. So, yeah. But yeah, so we're excited. Like I said, two new parks. Neither of us have been to SeaWorld or Bush Gardens. And so a bunch of new coaster credits and uh, Iron Gwazi. Oof. Very excited for that one. I am excited. So that. obviously there's other ones too. I'm excited for Montu and, uh, Mako and some other ones in there, but uh, yeah, good stuff. Well, let's go ahead and jump right into today's episode. Before we start, I just find it funny oh. that you, whenever I mentioned Iron Gwazi, you're like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, we were, because we were talking about um, what, we, we weren't sure if Haley was going to be able to go to the parks or not, 
just kind of as we were planning this out and the logistics behind it. And uh, at one point she was like, I just really want to go to Bush Gardens because I want to want to ride Iron Gwazi. And I was like, I am impressed that you knew <laughs> that Iron Gwazi was at Bush Gardens Tampa and that the you G- even knew what that the, was. The, the G- GP was paying attention. I know. <laughs> So if you haven't, that's a good point. If you haven't listened to the show before. So I am a roller coaster enthusiast and have been for a long time. My wife Haley is a member of the GP or the general public. And so I'm here to do the research and to tell the stories of the coasters we talk about. And Haley is here to listen to the stories and to make me more interesting. So and Nathan's a, the nerd and I'm the cool one. That is, <laughs> that is derogatory. Usually, when you keep saying when you refer to a geek, a roller coaster geek, you're like, it's no, not I'm derogatory. Just te- I'm just teasing you. When no. you say the nerd and the cool one, that is derogatory. You always tell me I'm the, the better half of you. Better half does not mean that. <laughs> the, the Saying you're my better half is be- different than saying I'm the nerdy one and you're the cool one. It's also derogatory to, towards other enthusiasts that are listening to the show. Sorry. Haley. Sorry. <laughs> Rude. I'm sorry. I take it back. <clears throat> I'm the nerd. We can both be nerds. That's, there's oh, okay. nothing wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to follow along with today's episode, you can do so by going to our social accounts. Um, we're on X slash Twitter or um, Instagram, and you can go and follow us there now, and then I'll be showing Haley pictures and videos throughout today's episode, and so if you want to follow along with those, you can do so over on our socials. Um, if you go on Twitter slash X, you can pretty much see everything I'll show her. Instagram, I'm limited to 10 pictures, so it's limited in that sense, but you'll still see a good amount of it, so be sure to go and do that. And with that, I think we'll just jump right in. Jumping into history. So we're staying in the southeast today. We're not that far from where we were last week, honestly. We're going to Carowinds today. Okay. So another coaster that Haley hasn't been on, which is unfortunate. It's, but <laughs> yeah. Carowinds was the time that we were on family vacation with my family. <clears throat> and I don't see him as often. So, like, I didn't want to go because i want to spend time with my family yeah well and i went with your brother who your older older not your older brother but your older of your two younger brothers who does enjoy roller coasters meanwhile your youngest brother doesn't so not all of the family was going to the amusement park so it was kind of like like a split yeah so yeah so the two of us went and everyone else stayed behind but anyway so that was that was our carowinds day so that's why Haley hasn't ridden this coaster but uh we are talking about Afterburn at Carowinds today. So Afterburn is their inverted coaster. Okay. So it's uh, like um, like Great Bear or Raptor at Cedar Point. Or have you done any other inverts besides Great Bear at Hershey? Mm. I'm trying to think if there's any others that you didn't do Raptor. Mm-hmm. Oh Banshee! I guess you've done Banshee because that one has the best restraints uh, at Kings Island. Yeah. So, but you tend to stay away from the inverts just because you don't like the over-the-shoulder restraints. Like so, but uh, you did Great Bear, and you said that one wasn't too bad. So, yeah, that one wasn't too bad. <clears throat> so, so Afterburn is the invert coaster at Carowinds. Okay. Opened in 1999, uh, ten and a half million dollars, two thousand nine hundred sixty-five feet long, uh, one hundred and thirteen feet tall, sixty-two mile per hour top speed. And six inversions, so pretty, pretty substantial. I think Great Bear, by comparison, I think Great Bear might be longer, but Great Bear only has four inversions mm. by comparison. So they pack a pack a lot into Afterburn's layout. So uh, average twenty twenty three wait time is only fourteen minutes, though. Wow, so, that's a short wait. What's yeah, the capacity on it. Well, the capacity, the B, all the B and M. Well, not all the B and M. Most B and M coasters have a capacity. There's like thirty two seats per train which helps with capacity a lot hmm. so generally speaking the b&m coasters have shorter wait times than like an rmc or an intamin coaster to do so um so that helps but afterburn also has been at the park a while they've opened three other major roller coasters since it opened so they opened uh, 
<clears throat> we'll talk we'll talk about it later but they opened intimidator um and then fury 325 and then just in 2019 they opened copperhead strike so those three are taking up a lot of you know a lot of people riding those three as well so yeah. that kind of helps with afterbirds wait time i think so uh, and the coaster bot rankings it ranks at number 61 in the country which is pretty good oh, so it's pretty good. yeah it's actually it's the third highest invert coaster in the rankings it only falls behind montu at bush gardens tampa which is the one i'm i'm excited to write that one and you know just a few days it's supposedly everyone says that one's the best invert in the country so and then the other one is alpengeist which is at bush gardens williamsburg so bush gardens killing it with the two best inverts in the country and then carowinds comes in with at number three with afterburn so uh ranks ahead of other inverts such as raptor at cedar point banshee at king's island and talon at dorney park uh carowinds it currently ranks third behind fury 325 and copperhead strike which then puts it ahead of thunder striker at number four nighthawk at five and then vortex flying cobras carolina cyclone hurler and then some of the smaller ones so okay <clears throat> uh review the name i actually really like the name of of afterburn i think it's a really good name and we'll talk about it later in the episode but it doesn't really make sense to me so afterburn um we'll talk about it later in the episode as well but it's basically it's a type of combustion um in jet engines like for for a fire jet so that's where it comes from. And um, we'll talk more about the name later, so I'll just leave that for, for later. Well, I do think... It's a surprise. It is a surprise. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I do like the logo a lot, too. It's kind of interesting that this... I say, I do like the logo. So this logo has been around since 2007, I think. And it doesn't feel outdated or anything like no. that. Like, if it still feels very modern and, like... I don't look at this and I'm like, wow, they need to update that. Like, it, it looks right. just as good as it probably did back in 2007 yeah. when it opened. So, yeah. Or when they when they introduced this logo. So, um, review the paint scheme. <clears throat> so, it's got, like, this um, almost white. Like, when, when I first, like, watched videos of the coaster, I kind of thought it was white. But now that I've seen it in person and as I've been looking at stuff through the episode, it's more of a silver uh, just a very light silver track with the the almost not quite royal blue, but close to royal blue supports on mm. the on the paint scheme. So I like the royal blue. It looks I really nice. It's so really <clears throat> dashing color. I think the the colors work really well together, and it gives me kind of a a fighter jet. Like the it's a good paint scheme for something that's like based off of a fighter jet. Like it it works well together. I like think. Top so. gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh. You have no idea how exactly <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> Um here's a picture of the trains. The trains are kinda cool. The um so there's a red train and a yellow train. Um and they have like designs on the inverts are kind of tricky to be able to actually design because there's not a lot of actual train to work with. Right. It's kind of just seats hanging from a track, right? Um, but they, they put in the extra work on Afterburn here. You can see on the top of the red train here, there's a, I think it's like a hawk or a falcon that's on the side here. And then they've even on the, on the yellow train, they've got like, um, like a shark head, like that would be on like, like dog fighting planes, like in World War II or something like that. So, oh, wow. so it was pr pretty cool designs that they, they put on the, the, in the trains on Afterburn, which... They didn't have to, but I just appreciate the extra effort that they put into to I paint them that like way. That so, when, like, yeah. you know, people put in just an extra effort that makes it go <clears throat> the long mile. I guess mm -hmm. is what Looks good. They look good. So, um, here's the park's description of the ride. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. After Here we go. Sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> Afterburn embodies the high-flying speeds and gravity-defying maneuvers of a fighter jet. Full of action and unpredictable inversions, this coaster is a can't-miss for any thrill-seeker visiting the park. Introduced to Carowinds in 1999, Afterburn is the park's third tallest and fastest roller coaster. 
Riders fly through six inversions, including a space drop, a vertical loop, an Immelman, an actual maneuver used by fighter pilots, a zero-g roll, a bat wing, a flat spin, and finally a spiral. Wow. <laughs> it basically just went through the, the ride's entire layout there. <laughs> Uh, that was pretty that funny. Was amazing. Yep. If you don't know, Nathan does that every single time he describes the mm -hmm, coasters. Yeah. Every time. And it makes me laugh every time. I just think it's funny how dramatic some of these descriptions that they have on the websites yeah. are. So <clears throat> I think it's funny to introduce them as if it was like a like, like a, a movie like a movie trailer yeah. or something. <laughs> You Customer know, like, reviews. Background music part oh, two. We do. You don't listen to our podcast. You don't know that I do have background music for, for when that you section. Describe? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I do listen. Just like I don't know. I listen more like as a, like a background noise for me. <laughs> gotcha. So oh yeah. There's get... oh yeah. There's music behind that every time we do it. <laughs> Such a dork. I love you. I also have special <laughs> music for the customer reviews. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. Oh, uh, 4.8 out of 5 on Google reviews. That's a pretty good rating. Um, again, I mention this every time, just a disclaimer. I don't pull like average reviews. I pull the reviews that I find interesting or funny. So 4.8 out of 5. This has really good reviews. Um, Here's one star. Personally, I hated this ride because I've never really been big on roller coasters until recently. And this one was really rough and it gave me a bad head and stomach ache. And most of the people in the group also disliked this coaster. Seems unlikely that most people in his group would dislike the coaster when it has a 4.8 out of 5. I don't know. It's generally liked, so it's just kind of odd that he would say a lot of people disliked it. But yeah. Oh, here's another one star. Way too intense. My legs were numb during the ride and I grayed out. There's no way this ride is allowed to operate with how intense it is. I seriously <laughs> wonder how it is legal for a roller coaster to be this intense. Nice. Plus, it's rough. I got a huge headache from this ride. Make sure you avoid this ride at all costs. Wow. Four exclamation points. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. The funny thing is, is I've, I don't even feel like Afterburn's the most intense coaster in the park. <laughs> Fury 325 takes that for me. Like, yeah. I don't know. It, I guess it just yeah. depends on your definition of intense because as far as inversions go, clearly Afterburn is more intense. But Fury 325 is 30 miles per hour faster than this ride. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? Um, here's two stars. Overrated. My head got banged so much my ears hurt afterwards. Oh. Well, no. So, so, Sorry. Someone that feels like they probably would... That's... That might be how you feel about this ride, depending on how much headaches. head banging you get from the well, over-the-shoulder like restraints, really so... Headaches. Going over their head restraint. Just because my head bangs, like, <clears> so much, like... Yeah. I don't know. They just put vest restraints on all of the... Yes, please. Coasters. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, another two stars. This ride gives you headache and neck ache. So, yeah, same kind of same thing here. Uh, t here's here's one that just is two stars. Scary, and then like an emoji with like the zipper for a mouth. What? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Scary, and I'm not saying anything else about it. <laughs> okay. My lips are sealed. Um, <laughs> this one just made me laugh because. <laughs> I'll just read it. Uh, three stars. If you eat spicy food and ride this ride, you oh. may have an afterburn. <laughs> oh, gross. I, I don't I know. I was going to say something else. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Let's not finish this one. Yeah. Uh, four stars. Amazing ride. Super fun. But the only negative is it's not very fun to go on twice. The thrill is the surprise. So if you expect what's coming, it's not as fun. Okay, let, let's oh, break this down go. for a second. Here so this this individual is saying that a coaster is never fun again after you've ridden it one time. Because like I just <laughs> so like every coaster you can yeah, only ride one wants. time, <laughs> and then it's not the surprise anymore. So now it's not very fun to go on it anymore. I don't. <laughs> I just don't understand the logic here. <laughs> Can you imagine if that's how people, how, how everyone was, like, 
you just like rode everything at Disney one time and you're like, well, bet on that. I guess yep, never coming back. Never coming back here again. <laughs> I mean, I guess there are people like I, that. Though. I guess I. It does not seem like this is the norm to me. <laughs> oh. I mean, there's people that I've talked to that have said, "I've been to Disney. I don't need to go back." I've I've known enthusiasts. Like, why? I've known enthusiasts that have been on the same coaster a thousand times in the same year. That's a pretty crazy. thousand. A thousand. <laughs> a thousand. I don't know. I feel about that. that is crazy. That's a lot. Oh, so yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, this one doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, four stars, still very smooth, but a bit rough. Oh. <laughs> what? Those oh. can't coexist. What are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> and then finally, <laughs> this last one, one star. I hate roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> well. Then you would hate Afterburn. That is fair. <laughs> I hate roller coasters. Oh man, I like that one. <laughs> there you go. There's your, there's your customer reviews of Afterburn. And roller coasters. Oh, let's talk about the history of Afterburn at Carowind. So I hate roller coasters. Let's That's all, uh, let's all strap in. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the time machine at all times, and let's go back to 1986. Alright, May 16th, 1986. Top Gun is released. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're talking about Top Gun is actually topical I today. Was... So, <laughs> Starring Tom Cruise, Kelly McGillis, Val Kilmer, Anthony Edwards, and Tom Skerritt. Uh, with only a budget of $15 million. The movie was a huge commercial success um, with a box office of $357 million, which is over a billion dollars adjusted for inflation. That's so crazy. Pretty significant. Now, this isn't the 80s movie podcast, so we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about Top Gun and the historical and cultural impact that it had back in the just 80s. So but the uh, <clears throat> I'll just say this uh, about the movie. In 2015... The Library of Congress selected the film for preservation in the National Film Registry, finding it culturally and historically significant. So, mm. definitely one of the most iconic movies of all time. And uh, so, yeah, it's a big deal. And you know, it, then it spawned a sequel a few years back, and everyone's been going crazy amazing. about that one. So, oh. for good reason, it was a very good movie. It's a very good Your movie. Dad's watched it like a hundred times so I, I don't even know how many times it's like your dad's favorite movie it is his favorite <laughs> so, movie so why is this significant to our story today well as we've discussed previously on the show one of the big players in the amusement industry during the turn of the century was paramount parks this is a paramount film by the way so that's where this all ties in so paramount parks got their start when king's island opened in 1972 and that would eventually expand into King's Dominion, Canada's Wonderland, California's Great America, and Carowinds, where we're at today. Uh, the parks were owned by Taft Broadcasting, which later became Great American Broadcasting, um, until 1992 when Paramount purchased the five parks, and then they kind of, oh, it became King's Island became Paramount's King's Island, and um, Canada's Wonderland became Paramount's Canada's Wonderland, Carowinds, et cetera, et cetera. They all yeah. had Paramount in, in the name. So when Paramount purchased the parks, they would re rethemed some of the rides to popular Paramount properties. And so, um, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff we could get into. Like we, when we talked about Flight of Fear last season, if Flight of Fear was themed to, um, the Outer Limits, which was a Paramount property. And so, right. All, all the, you know, big coasters and everything, they're all themed to Paramount properties the same way that Disney does and Universal does, right? Yeah. To help market their, you know, their movies and their TV shows and stuff. Okay? Yes. So, when Paramount purchased the parks in 1992, they wanted to make a big splash in the industry and wanted to really show, like, really put some big additions into the park so that they could start, you know, marketing their new paramount parks also with a you know a brand new roller coaster or whatever so they couldn't do all the parks at once obviously but where they started was 
um, two Top Gun themed roller coasters at California's Great America and King's Island that opened in 1993. Um, so here's King's Island's Top Gun, uh, opened at 1993, an aerodynamic suspended coaster, and actually the last one that was ever constructed. So there you go. And then this one, um, this was also Top Gun. This was an inverted coaster that opened at California's Great America in 1993. So we got two, two Top Gun coasters that are different models, different manufacturers, but they're both coasters that hang under the track so they can kind of simulate the flying and, you know, in a jet or whatever. So, yeah. Okay. Got it. That's that's what makes the the Top Gun theme actually make sense for both of the coasters. So yes. Um, let's see the suspended inverted coaster. Oh, we talked about that. So success of these coasters led Paramount to really just want to bring the Top Gun theme to the other parks as well. So then in 1995, Top Gun would open at Canada's Wonderland. So when they were deciding which model to go with for this Top Gun, Aerodynamics, which built this one at Kings Island, their finances were not in a good spot. Um, and then B&M. So this, this, uh, the B&M coaster that opened at California's Great America was only the second one ever constructed. Hmm. The first one was at Six Flags Great America. I can't remember. That may have been when both of the... Now that I'm thinking about it, that may have been when Marriott owned both of them. So maybe Marriott bought it in a bundle and then Paramount just got lucky that, I don't know. I'd have to re go back on the history on that because I just realized it's interesting that both Great America Parks, which are part of separate chains now, but were part of the same chain at one point, are the first two parks that got an invert coaster. I have to look back in the history on why that happened. So anyway, so it was very early on and the inverted coaster just took off after that and Six Flags was buying tons of them. And so I don't know if B&M was too busy or if it was just more expensive. So Paramount went with a Vacoma inverted coaster for Carolyn's Wonder or Canada's Wonderland. So here is Top Gun at Canada's Wonderland, this one down here on the bottom, which okay. is, it's the same idea. It's an inverted coaster, just Are like. Are they all the same layout or? Oh no, they're, they're, they're completely different, different completely different. So, okay. yep. All, all named Top Gun, um, but this one's an aerodynamic suspended. This one's a B&M inverted and this one's a Vacoma inverted. So, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. exactly. <laughs> So um, then when it became King's Dominion's turn in 1998, they actually, because of, we've talked about this coaster before, we talked about Volcano, the Blast Coaster, yes. which was King's Dominion's inverted coaster. But that one, rather than go with the Top Gun theme, they had the empty mountain that they decided to turn into a volcano and build a the roller coaster inside of that. animatronic mountain. Yeah, the one that had the the Smurf ride and the so um, oh, what was the the there was like the dark ride that yeah oh no it was it was like a water there was a water ride there's the Smurf ride and then there was the spinning ride that the the foundation eroded on it from everyone throwing up on it you yep. remember that <laughs> yeah yep. good stuff so mm -hmm. so they ended up building Volcano the Blast Coaster there instead of so the Top Gun theme didn't make sense over at King's Dominion so. So finally, after all of this, now Carowinds finally gets their turn for their inverted coaster. So um, Carowinds had built other coasters in the meantime. So like Hurler, which is at the park now, um, was actually a Wayne's World roller coaster, which I don't remember what year Wayne's World came out, but and it used to be called something different. Um, I can't remember now, but anyway... <laughs> So they, they had already built some other coasters, but they just hadn't gotten a major steel coaster like all of the other parks had at this point. So um, discussions for Carowinds Coaster actually started in 1997, and Paramount decided to go back to B&M for this coaster, mostly because, one, Aerodynamics was almost out of business at this point. They were kind of on the last threads of their finances. And unfortunately for Canada's Wonderland, the Vacoma model had developed a reputation of being quite inferior by this point. <laughs> so they decided to just nix the, the Vacoma model and go back to the B&M model that they did at California's Great America. Mm -hmm. so, so while development was underway for the actual layout of the ride, uh, Paramount Park officials were trying to determine if they were still going to go with the Top Gun theme for this one or if they were going to go for something different. 
1998, Paramount had a new Godzilla movie being released. So here's the oh. movie poster for the 1998 Godzilla. Okay. From the creators of Independence Day, size does matter. That's a, a typical 90s <laughs> movie poster for you. Yep. <laughs> Very corny. Mm -hmm. uh, released May 20th, 1998, starring Matthew Roderick, Gene Reno. I should have looked up how to pronounce these. I don't know very many of these. I know Matthew Roderick, but uh, also Maria Patillo, Hank Azaria, Kevin Dunn, Michael Lerner, and Harry Shearer. So, unfortunately for Paramount, this turned out to be a massive flop. <laughs> so... It did bring in $379 million at the box office, but that was after about $230 million was spent on the film, and that's not even including marketing dollars. So the film was Ouch. the film was nominated by several parody award shows that recognized the worst movies of the year, Ooh. including the Razzies, the Bogey Awards, and the Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. <laughs> the film what, was What award did you win? The stinkers. Yeah. L later on, stinkers compiled a list of their picks for the 100 worst movies of all time, and Godzilla came in at number 18. <laughs> so this movie so was. Sad. Nobody liked this movie. <laughs> I feel so, bad for them. That's really sad. That happens all the time. So the film that was supposed. mean it's not sad. <laughs> That's still very sad. You can feel bad for them. Yeah. I don't. Most of the people involved with these movies make way more money than I do, so I don't feel too bad. <laughs> okay. The film was originally going to be the start of a trilogy, but that was canceled shortly thereafter. So, not surprising. So, after they took Godzilla off the table, because they're not going to theme this roller coaster to this movie that everyone yeah. hates, <laughs> Paramount decided to just go with the obvious pick, and so. On July 3rd, 1998, Carowinds announced Top Gun the Jet Coaster, a $10.5 million steel inverted coaster by B&M. So here's uh, one of the pictures um, from so the announcement. it was announcement. originally called Top Gun? It was originally called Top Gun the Jet Coaster, which mm -hmm. is different. All the other ones are just called Top Gun, but this one was Top Gun the Jet Coaster was the official name, which is kind of interesting. You know what song I think of whenever you say that? Top Gun the Jet Coaster. What do you, what do you, what song do you think? I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know if I'll be back again. Isn't that the. Oh, if is I, if I watch on? this, I'm going to. <laughs> what is it? I'm pretty. Fresh from order work? No, I don't want to botch it, so I'm going to look it up because I want to make sure. <laughs> I'm what, are, what are you looking up? The song name and like who it was sung by. Oh, okay. So, interesting. So, this picture um, was released. John Denver. Oh, there you go. So. I don't know why I know that song, but I know that song. I don't know why I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, a lot of that song, too. Yeah, clearly. He starts singing it, so. <laughs> so. So, this picture right here, this is kind of interesting. This was, I think this was on the... Uh, like promotional material for the ride but you'll notice this is an actual picture and you can't have an actual picture of the ride before it's constructed right this is top gun from california's great america oh. in this picture so the paint scheme is slightly different it's like a gunmetal gray and the trains are slightly different too so the i, I realized that when i was looking at this picture i'm like that is not afterburn that is that is a different coaster entirely so then here's a, this is kind of interesting. The layout, when, when they did the rendering for the layout, they put it over the ocean with like aircraft carriers and stuff. Like as if it was like from the movie where, you know, the, you know, flying over the ocean and landing on aircraft carriers and stuff. So I was like, that's kind of an interesting marketing tactic. Mm -hmm. And then they had this little display outside, um, outside the construction site while in the park there. So uh, I got a couple of, oh, I forgot I had this. So. This is a layout of the ride. We'll get to that in a, in a second. Um, I have a couple videos here um, from the announcement of the, the coaster, so we can watch these real quick. How 90s are they? Oh, they're... You tell me. <laughs> okay. Uh, the music already. <laughs> Be 
those explosions kill me. <laughs> it was so... <laughs> the, the rendering job on it was just so bad. <laughs> so what we're watching, it's like a video of the layout of the coaster, but it's also overlaid with like... There's like other jets, fl yeah, like yeah. the radar, and there's like other jets flying around the coaster, and like the other thing we were looking at, it's over the ocean, as if like you're you know flying your jet like in the midst of battle here. Yeah, so. it's a Navy pilot. Yeah, yeah, just just like in the movie, mm -hmm. right? So it's just so funny to me. Like it's actually like like. Pretending to be shooting, like, I don't know, it's just... It's kind of cheesy. Yeah, it is, it is very cheesy, so... But, I mean, you get, you're getting the idea of what the ride is actually going to be like, but it's just kind of funny the way they decide to do it, so... And also, I like the, the very generic, not copyright, um, Danger Zone. You know, it's like, it sounds like Danger Zone from the movie, but it's not, so you don't have to pay for the... <laughs> so... I think That's I have a, a song. It was very good. So I think I have a news broadcast here that we can watch now, talking about the ride. Oh my gosh! That's a new way to make you fly. New way to make you fly. If you ever feel the need for speed, Paramount's Carol Wins might have your ticket. It's called Top Gun and will be the fastest and maybe most exciting ride at the park. This will be a world-class roller coaster, and it will be our eighth roller coaster here at the park. It's a new inverted steel coaster with floorless cars. Look out, suspended below the track. It's almost 3,000 feet long and will reach speeds up to 62 miles an hour. The project has been a well-kept secret. We've, we've known about it for a while. It's been hard to be, keep quiet about it because we're so excited. Watch out now. The new roller coaster Watch will start out. rolling when the park opens in the summer of next year. If you could wait for that. I like Thunder Road. It's the classic roller coaster. I'll try that one, but that looks good. I did the Vortex. If I could survive that, I guess I could try that one once. You just got to time lunch right. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. That's, that's great stuff watching these old videos. So. <laughs> You'd be careful. We don't know who. They're not old. I mean, this video is... I mean, we're older than this video, so, I mean, by me calling this video old, I'm calling us old, so... Oof. Oof. <laughs> Bite your tongue. Uh, in the end, the park seemed... The park seemed happy that to, that they ended up going with Top Gun's the theme, so uh, this is a quote from Steve Jackson, who is the director of maintenance and construction at the time. He said, quote, when looking at it as a roller coaster, it had all of the aircraft moves in it and it did them perfectly. It's got all of the forces naturally that you'd feel in an F-14. It made sense to do it that way. You could make Godzilla look pretty as far as the music and getting people involved with the coaster. But you've got all those elements you can do in an F-14. It drives the theming and overall experience of the traction. So mm. uh, it's actually kind of interesting. The um, On the coaster, there's this element uh, you heard it mentioned earlier the Immelman um, which is actually named after a fighter jet maneuver oh, um, that cool. was developed by a man by it was a German fighter pilot in World War one whose name was Immelman so hmm. so that Immelman element basically what it is it's a this is a diagram of how it looks in an actual fighter jet but on a coaster so essentially you do a half loop and then you do a roll back over onto, you know, so you're up facing upright again and then kind of drop back down. Hmm. So here's the, this is the Immelman on that Afterburn like right fine. here. So, yeah. so you per, you can find Immelmans on all kinds of B&M coasters all over the place. So it's a very popular, very popular um, inversion on B&Ms in particular, but also on other coasters as well. So, yeah. but it was just kind of interesting to have a, an Immelman on a coaster that actually was themed to a jet fighter has kind of come full circle. So um, the coaster would require the removal of the park's Bayern curve ride, um, which is, uh, this is wild bull here. So here says the sign says wild bull is closed for construction of our new top gun jet coaster. We apologize for the inconvenience. So actually I was looking at this, that, so these, these old Bayern curve flat rides, 
they're kind of like a roller coaster, but it's a it's powered and it just goes in a circle and has like one hill. Uh, there actually used to be one of these at Kennywood. So I don't know when I was it got. Say it looks kind of. Funny. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know when it got taken out, but uh, nowadays there's. I don't think there's any that are operating in the U.S. right now, but Knobles is building one right now, which is kind of fun. Which Knobles. That's classic Knobles to just build rides that don't exist anymore. Hmm. Knobles kind of likes to do vintage stuff at the park, which is That's pretty cool. cool so. so they had to close this, and the plan apparently was to put it into storage and then open it back up. But that just never happened for some reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I have no idea whatever happened to the ride, but... The, Did you say that there was one in Kennywood? There used know? to. There used to be. Do you remember what it was called? I don't. We could probably find out, but uh, oh, I'm curious yeah. now because wonder when it closed in Kennywood because it really does look familiar. Uh, if I remember correctly, because I looked at the list of them, I feel like Kennywood's has closed in the last ten years. I was gonna say it looks like something I've been on. So it's possible. Very possible. Hmm. So, um, <clears throat> because they decided to put the coaster where Wild Bull was, some of the area that the coaster was being constructed already had been cleared. So that made construction an easier process. But the actual coaster, they decided to design, design the layout in a way that no trees were removed during construction. So here's a, here's a quote from the, the construction, actually. Uh, Watt Burris, the general manager, had this vision. He said, we're going to tell B&M that they can build this right up there, but we're not going to cut down any trees. They have to work through them. So that was wow. the whole plan was like, whatever trees are there are staying. We're going to build this layout around the trees. And that's exactly what they did. So that's kind of cool. I, I haven't heard a lot of coasters that have done that where it's basically just like whatever trees are there, we're just going to work with it. So I like that. Uh, another thing they did um, is they ended up building where the coaster is situated they are able to build it um kind of on a hill which makes it more visible from not just within the park but also makes it more visible from um, the highway and we talked about this when we did our intimidator episode in season one but carowinds is in a position where they've always tried to build the roller coasters in a spot at least lately They've tried to build the roller coasters in a spot where it's really visible from the highway, from Interstate right. 77, as people pass by. Because then it's just, like, a giant billboard, right? Right. So, free, I just... Like, not free, but, like, you know, like... It, it's it's yes. free, free marketing yes. in yes. sense. Yeah, yeah I, see what, what, I see what you're saying. What I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. so, like, so here's a picture here. This is, um... It was Intimidator, now it's Thunderstriker, but... This one really is quite visible from Interstate 77, and, you know, we talked about that when we did that episode. But you can see Afterburn right over here is, is visible from the road over here, and that obviously Fury 325 is massive and is pretty much visible from anywhere. But, so the coasters, they, they've tried to put them in a spot where, you know, people can see it from the road, and that gets people that are driving by just be like, whoa, check that out, and, you know, yeah. gets people to, the at least people that are locals could see that and, you know, maybe haven't heard about the coaster. I might convince them to go and check it out someday. So um, here's some construction photos from the ride. There's actually quite a few construction photos, which is pretty fun. Sometimes these coasters, like you don't get to see anything. It, but, know, uh, like yeah, there's a, there's a lot of construction photos from, from Top Gun. So. I still hate that job, but <laughs> I would literally, yep. like, oh, I'd panic. <laughs> Every time we look at construction photos, Haley's just like, oh. oh it makes me, like, want to vomit. Like, oh, I can't. Okay, my Haley. worst fear. I know that, like, we've talked about this, like, once or twice before. But, like, I would just, I would die. I would die if we get stuck on a video, like, a ride on the lift hill. I would just die. Like, I would, I, I would be paralyzed. They would have to get, like, a chain, like, a power lift crane to get me down because you would be more comfortable with them lifting you out with a crane than walking maybe, downstairs maybe not Might okay i was gonna say because really <laughs> like if we got if you get stuck like right here 
that's why this whole bottom section is here is because if it gets stuck then you can just walk down the stairs back to the station oh yeah you can just walk down the stairs well if they didn't put that there then you'd be dangling in midair so (laughs) i do think that is preferable (laughs) oh that sounds so terrible yep Haley hates roller co- or ha- hates Ferris wheels more than roller coasters for I that do, reason. I do. I <laughs> do. It's like, it, and I've told Nathan this before. It's <coughs> the constant motion that is okay for me. Like the roller coasters, if they just keep going, I'm not freaked out. If it's a Ferris wheel, will they stop? Oh man. <laughs> oh man. No thanks. I didn't find this out until I took Haley on a Ferris wheel, so oh, that was I that was a good time. Panicked. <laughs> It's terrible. It was a big one too. Two hundred feet, right? I think it was a two hundred foot roller coaster. Yeah. You know, or two hundred foot Ferris wheel. So construction went along pretty smoothly. Um, by January of nineteen ninety nine, the coaster had already begun testing, which is perfect. You know, that gives them a couple months to work out any bugs before the park opens in March. And then on March 20th, 1999, Top Gun, the jet coaster, would open as scheduled and continues to operate to this day. Uh, The ride experience is as follows. The train leaves the station and climbs the chain lift hill, reaching a peak height of 113 feet. The train then drops to the right before entering its first inversion, a 90-foot vertical loop. Riders then travel through a small ravine that dips below ground level and enter an Immelman loop, which sends the train in the opposite direction. The train drops towards the ground, climbs back up, and spins through a zero-g roll. Afterwards, the train drives, dives back towards the ground and enters the double-inverting bat wing um, that crosses through a tunnel underneath the park's rear entrance. After the train exits the bat wing, it climbs through a camelback hill over the station before entering the final inversion, a corkscrew to the right. The train then begins a 200 degree turn while climbing to the left, after which it hits the final brakes. So, So, have we talked about why it's called. Why why it's not. not, Why it's not called Top Gun anymore? I thought we. We'll get to that. (laughs) Okay. I always skip ahead. I'm kind of. Hey, Haley gets impatient. She's like, I want to know what happens. <laughs> give me, give it to me. These two pictures, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure about this picture, but I know this picture and this one are actually from opening day. Okay. So that's pretty cool. I like it when I have actually have pictures from the opening of the coaster. <gasps> Do you so. think they took pictures of um, Fire in the Hole opening day? Might have been in one of those pictures. It may have been in one of the pictures, so yeah. it's definitely possible. Awesome. I actually did see one picture that I looked and I did see us, but we're like, we're like this big. I'm like, you can just see the top of our heads or something like that. <laughs> so, but yeah, you can actually see there's like tables with like balloons and stuff. So they're doing some kind of media day or something for the ride. So that's fun. Um, so uh, I got a news article here. Here's from, here's from, this is from media day. So not the actual opening. So. Eyes. I think he's just looking down at the when they're they're trying to buckle him in. So this guy, I gotta say, uh, this is by Neil White. So Neil White, if you're listening, uh, you are an eccentric man. Um, this is this article is like <laughs> he, just, he just doesn't. I, I, let me just read some excerpts from this article. Ready? <laughs> you ready for this? Uh, So he talks about the ride a little bit, and then he says, How come I got to ride it before you? Well, I was part of the distinguished media VIP contingent that was invited to Tuesday's special sneak preview of the coaster. And you, of course, are a loser. (laughs) Come on, just kidding. You're very special, too. (laughs) Actually, I had to leave a suitcase full of unmarked bills under a pine tree on the South Carolina, North Carolina state line for unidentified Carowinds officials before I could gain entry. What the? (laughs) So... Sar- this this man speaks in sarcasm. We'll just leave <laughs> the whole article no. that way. Here's another excerpt. I also spotted several people at the park wearing jackets with an inscription of American coaster enthusiasts. From what I understand, they're a lot like Grateful Dead va- fans, only they roam the country in psychedelic vans going to roller coaster openings. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, here's two more. Uh, he talks about how B&M is from Switzerland, and he says, So you know it's crafted with typical Swiss precision. Even though I've never been to Switzerland, I can personally vouch for both Bolliger and Maviard. 
As the owner of one of their state-of-the-art toaster ovens, I can tell you that sucker lightly crisps a slice of Wonder Bread like nobody's business. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> I was like, does b and make toasters? <laughs> B&M does not make toasters. I have no idea what he's talking about here. <laughs> it's... Okay. Um, and then here's one last... <laughs> last thing here okay. um then it's time to get in line for the ride that is unless you're some sort of gutless wonder what? all of you people afraid of a little speed with your weak stomachs and your fear of heights should just step aside and wait at the exit with the other weenies <laughs> okay man Can you call them weenies? <laughs> what the this is a very interesting <laughs> article get out of here <laughs> oh man good times so yeah this is very strange <laughs> All right, let's see here. Riders of the first cycle included NASCAR drivers Stanton Barrett, Jerry Nado, Kenny Wallace, and Tony Stewart. So, Do you know who any of those are? Uh, I know who Kenny Wallace and Tony Stewart are. So, yeah, Tony Stewart sounds familiar. Tony, Stoller, Tony Stewart's a, a Hall of Famer, so that doesn't surprise mm-hmm. me that he sounds familiar. So, But um, <laughs> I do find it funny. I was, I was reading that, and I'm like, kind of interesting they brought in nascar drivers for top gun the only thing the only reason that makes sense is because it's in charlotte which is where a lot of the nascar teams are based out of i guess so but i was like eh, i guess tom cruise must have been busy that day <laughs> Could, I mean, they couldn't afford him <laughs> yeah maybe that, that's what it was yep, yeah so i could see that being a reason definitely uh the queue and surrounding areas were given excellent theming uh, the queue and station are designed to mimic a typical uh, military hangar. Um, it's, it has a big uh, label on the side. It says Firetown USA. Mm-hmm. And there's also a two-thirds scale F-14 Tomcat that's on display outside of the ride. Oh, cool. So that's kind of a, f- a fun little detail. And you actually, the way it's positioned is um, when you're on the coaster, you fly past it and it's it's facing towards you. Oh, so so you kind of like, a fighter, yeah. like a, a fighter jet flyby as you're oh, as you're on the ride. So it's kind of fun that they did that. Like when they play chicken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a like a dog fight exactly. So uh, reception to the ride was fantastic. I mean, the B and M inverted coasters had all received high praises up until this point, and so Top Gun was no exception. Uh, in the 1999 Golden Ticket Awards, uh, Top Gun would rank as the 18th best steel coaster in the world. It also finished third for Best New Ride of 1999, coming in behind Raging Bull at Six Flags Great America at second, and Superman Ride of Steel at Six Flags Darien Lake in first. So, uh, The coaster was Carolyn's new headlining attraction, obviously, and it remained that way for a long time. Um, a, a lot of industry experts kind of feel like Top Gun was a big turning point for Carowinds. What was kind of just a mid-sized regional park up until this point was now turning heads with a, you know, big state-of-the-art steel coaster. Yeah. Um, Steve Jackson, who we talked about earlier, he said, um, quote, Our attendance jumped significantly after Top Gun opened. It put Carowinds on the map as far as regional amusement parks go. Usually when you get a new coaster, there's an attendance bump and it goes back down. But we opened the coaster, saw the bump, and kept it. It was the work here... Uh, we're here. We're here to stay. Uh, this is what we're doing. Buy your season pass and let's go moment. Mm. So it was pretty cool. I like that quote. Buy your season pass. Buy your season pass and let's go. Let's I go. like it. <laughs> so, so the success of the new coaster drove up attendance, as he mentioned, and Paramount was encouraged to continue investing in Carowinds. And so that resulted in new family coasters being built in 2002 and 2003. And then they relocated one of California's Great America's uh, big major thrill coasters to Carowinds in 2004. So they got a new coaster, you know, in three straight years uh, from 2002 to 2004. So um, they were obviously putting a lot of money into Carowinds. And I think that kind of all stemmed from how how well-received Top Gun had been just a few years earlier. So, yeah. so by the time, um, so then in 2006, this is going to answer your question from earlier. And you know, you know this, you just... We haven't talked about it in a while, so you've probably forgotten this. But the reason the name change happened is because in 2006, oh, they sold it and then Cedar, Paramount. yes, Cedar Got Fair it. purchases Carowinds, and so Paramount is no longer in the picture. 
So when Cedar Fair purchased the parks in 2006, um, the, I, I found this out. I don't know why I didn't realize this until I did the research for this episode, but actually Paramount offered to let Cedar Fair use their licensing for, I think, 10 years. Wow. Like, for a long time. And Cedar Fair was just like, nah. <laughs> oh, okay. They were just like, we're going to lose it eventually, so we might as well just, yeah, we'll just it skip it. for the, So, that's exactly, that's essentially it. Okay. <laughs> so, by 2008, pretty much everything within the chain had already been rebranded. So, most of the Top Gun coasters were renamed Flight Deck. So, here is... Um, also this one, this is a California's Great America. It was also repainted red. I'm not sure why they made that decision, but mm. so this is now, this is flight deck at California's Great America. And this is flight deck at Canada's Wonderland. Um, flight deck is in reference to the surface that, um, jets take land and take off from on an aircraft carrier. Right. I knew that. Okay. So you know what that means? Yes. So, um, also at Kings Island, that coaster was also renamed to Flight Deck, but was later later renamed to... Do you remember which ride that is? Which one? At, so at Kings Island, it's the suspended coaster, the one that swings back and forth. So it was Top Gun, and then it renamed to Flight Deck. But nowadays, it's known as... Very good. The bat. Oh, nice word. So we'll do when we do an episode on the bat, we'll talk about why that happened. But so that coaster has had three names <laughs> since it opened back in the 90s. But uh, so now there's only two coasters named Flight Deck. And for some reason, Carowinds Top Gun was renamed Afterburn. So here's the new right sign so out. Why it was named Afterburn? So here's the the prevailing. So because I did a little bit of research to see if I could understand why, and this is just rumor and hearsay among people amongst people that worked at the parks around that time. Okay. From what I understand, is when this all happened, the Cedar Fair gave the parks the option of naming the coaster, naming their Top Gun coasters Flight Deck or Afterburn. Those are the two options they were given. Okay. And I don't know why all of the parks chose Flight Deck, but from from my understanding, Carowinds actually initially chose Flight Deck as well. But then there was some poor reception amongst test groups mm. with the name. And so then Carowinds decided to flip, and Carowinds is the only one that went with Afterburn while the other parks went with Flight Deck. Which I don't understand because personally, I think Afterburn is a way better name than yeah. Flight Deck. Like, and it's funny. I just I just saw people talking about Flight Deck on Twitter slash X like just a couple days ago. You know, obviously in no relation to this episode because we haven't even talked about what our next episode is. So people on social media are just talking about it in general. But I saw someone say that like Cedar Fair has become more generic in some of their names. And someone's like, yeah, they named some of their coasters after, you know, the flat surface on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> so, fair. So I think Afterburn, which actually has to do with the jet and not the surface that the jet is landing on, I mm -hmm. think is a much better name. I agree. So, yeah, I agree for anyway, sure. So it's just kind of weird that Carowinds is the only one that went with Afterburn. There were rumors that California's Great America was going to switch theirs, but then that turned out not to be true. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. So not much had to be done to retheme the ride because it's still themed to fighter jets. They basically just had to remove anything that specifically referred to Top Gun. Yeah, Top Gun. Um, but there is an Easter egg that was left behind. Is um, on the top of the station. There's like a big star that's up there, mm -hmm. and you can see the initials T G on the uh, star at the top of the station. Obviously in reference to Top, Top Gun. Gun. So. Yeah. Uh, there's also an Easter egg on the fighter jet. The words Commander S. Jackson are below the window, a nod to Steve Jackson, who we talked about earlier. He was the, the construction and maintenance manager during the time the coaster was constructed. So fun little Easter egg Carowinds did for one of their longtime employees. So that's fun. That is fun. I like when they recognize people. Yeah, when they recognize people that actually work in the park. So mm -hmm. that's pretty fun. So. So, after a couple years as Afterburn, Carowinds would open another B&M coaster, Intimidator, in 2010, 
Um, we did an episode about Intimidator back in season one. I think it was episode 10. So if you want to go listen to that one, that coaster nowadays is known as Thunderstriker because they don't, they didn't renew the, uh, Dale Earnhardt licensing that was previously associated with that coaster. So, um, so now Thunderstriker is the, the coaster that opened in 2010. And in some people's eyes, that kind of took the the role of the new headline attraction at the park, even though Afterburn was still really popular. Um, in 2014, Afterburn celebrated its 15th birthday by receiving a new paint job. Um, from what I understand, they did consider doing a new paint scheme, which is what California's Great America did with their inverted coaster. Yeah. But ultimately, they just decided to repaint it the same colors, which I'm fine with. I don't... I don't think coasters necessarily need to be recolored when they need a new paint job. Um, now, if they were changing the theme of it, that's one thing. But, you know, yeah. um, I think it's perfectly fine to just give it a fresh repaint of what it used to look like. <laughs> so, um, I also have these maintenance pictures, which are just kind of, Oh, I guess it's just one picture. This is... I wasn't really sure where to put this because it doesn't really have anything to do with the history, but I just found this picture of them doing maintenance on the trains. That's cool. And I thought that was kind of cool, so I just had to throw that in there just to see, so... Um, Cedar Fair continued to see lots of potential in Carowinds as the years went on, just kind of the same way that uh, Paramount did, you know, as after Top Gun opened, like, the park just continued to gain more traction, so they kept adding coasters and... I think Cedar Fair has seen the same thing. But from what I understand, Charlotte is one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Yes. So I think so I think that has to do with it. Um, so I think there's just a lot of people moving into that area, and which is helping Carowinds continue to gain traction. You know, get more and more visitors. So right. um, in the following the following year in 2015, Carowinds would open Fury 325, which is widely considered one of the best roller coasters ever built. And obviously Afterburn and Intimidator took a back seat <laughs> to Fury as Fury is definitely the headlining attraction at Carowinds nowadays. Yep. Um, it's pretty hard to argue with that. So um, in 2019, they would also open Copperhead Strike, which is not too far from Afterburn in the park. I'm pretty sure you could actually see them from each other. Um, so, and Copperhead Strike, I think ar arguably is the pretty easily the number two at the park for in most people's eyes so um but uh, as we saw in the coaster bot rankings earlier afterburn has actually overtaken thunderstriker in the co coaster bot ranking so afterburn is pretty solidly in number three a uh, number three at the park i think now as far as the gp is concerned that might be different because of thunderstriker is more visible like it's right it's not at the front of the park but people see it as they're coming into the park it's this massive red roller coaster that's pretty hard to miss right right and it also doesn't have over the shoulder restraints it just has a lap bar so i think it's generally speaking a more comfortable coaster for the gp right. um and whereas it whereas comfort. whereas afterburn still has the over the shoulder restraints and it's kind of hidden out in the trees so I don't think it's as popular amongst the GP, but I think enthusiasts generally feel that Afterburn is better than Thunderstriker. That's kind of that would make sense why the Coasterbot rankings have it in that order. So um, also in 2019, Afterburn celebrated its 20th birthday, and the park even had a special birthday celebration Cute. with uh, decorations, a fighter jet filled with cupcakes. <laughs> Okay. And Snoopy in a pilot outfit. So oh. that's a fun little, fun little party. They actually, they put these banners outside of the ride, um, Afterburn, celebrating 20 years of flight, which uh, these banners hung outside the ride for the entirety of 2019, which is cool. That is cool. And then the park also buried a time capsule by the coaster that was to be opened in another 20 years, which seems to confirm that Carowinds plans to keep Afterburn around until at least 2039. So, okay. obviously, there's no confirmation of that, but it just would be weird to have an Afterburn time capsule that is there longer than Afterburn is. Yeah. <laughs> so, that would, be weird. That, that would be strange. It would be a strange decision. But uh, So, there's a, there's even the sign outside the ride that says, Afterburn time capsule, dedicated July uh, 31st, 2019. Beneath this sign lies a time capsule containing memories, messages, and items to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Afterburn to be opened 20 years from now in 2039. There you go. 
Um, last year, for Carowind's 50th anniversary, they opened the new Aeronautica Landing section of the park, um, which we've talked about on the podcast before, and I think in a Coaster Conversations episode we talked about it, or maybe we just talked about it at the beginning of a regular episode, I can't remember now, but... So it was a new land in the park celebrating North Carolina's aviation history, which, you know, obviously the the Wright brothers first took flight in North Carolina and Mm -hmm. the park's not that far from the Charlotte airport. So you see planes overhead all day. So there's just just a lot of history with aviation in that area. Um, So that was kind of the, the idea for this new section of the park was to have a bunch of aviation themed flat rides from Zamperla. Um, and then they had some some new restaurants and stuff too. So now when selecting where to put this area, they purposely built it right next to Afterburn. So while I haven't seen anybody confirm saying that, yes, Afterburn is considered part of this new area. I mean, it's pretty hard to deny because if you look at this picture, so here's the picture for the new Aeronautica landing, uh, like the sign welcome you to the area. I mean, Afterburn's right behind the sign so it's like I, I don't know how you would argue with that so i mean and like there's this flat right here that is like right next to certain sections of afterburn so it's it's right next to this new aeronautical right landing there. and it's themed to aviation because i mean it's jet it's jet fighters right so it's mm-hmm. still aviation themed so it makes sense to me. I consider it part of the Aeronautica landing area. I don't know if it's officially part of the that section of the park. Doesn't really matter, but yeah. it makes sense that they would put it next to Afterburn. It kind of ties that whole area together, I think. So, and finally, just a few weeks ago, Afterburn celebrated its twenty fifth anniversary. So on March, uh, what was it? On the twentieth, I think was the the day that it opened. Or is it, yeah, March 20th, 1999, so just, you know, a couple weeks ago, March 20th, 2024, celebrated its 25th anniversary, and I saw hey. no one talk about it. <laughs> so, like, I, it's weird that the park made this big deal about 20, but then the park did nothing for 25, so I don't know. I don't know what that's about. It's kind of oh. strange, but... <laughs> Interesting. So, but it did, it did celebrate 25 years just a couple weeks ago, so... And uh, other coasters of the park have obviously surpassed Afterburn in popularity, but it's no slouch. Like, I saw, I saw a statistic that as of 2018, it was still hitting 750,000 riders per year, which, not bad. I mean, you know, generally speaking, a coaster that's one of your headliners is pretty easily hitting a million riders every year. Yeah. So I wouldn't consider Afterburn a headline attraction at the park, but it's definitely, like second tier right and you know definitely bringing in a lot of people and uh obviously laid the groundwork for carolyn carolyn's to become one of the nation's best roller coaster parks and open the open the door for copperhead strike and fury 325 and all these other coasters that are considered some of the best in the country and so and um that is the history of afterburn at carolyn's any any final thoughts I'm good. I'm good. I know it's it's kind of tough for you since you haven't actually been on it and you yeah. don't really like invert it's coasters so that much. Okay, so here's the problem: is it's like I can't help it though because it's like I have to be a mom first. And <laughs> there's some that I like look at it. I'm like I'm not getting on that. So maybe we just need to develop like um something you can wear that like puts like little pillows up by your ear or whatever <laughs> so that way when you head bang it's like still up against like a nice soft I'll cushion fall asleep like on the coaster <laughs> i don't think you fall asleep <laughs> that'd be impressive if you could fall asleep on a roller Which coaster challenge oh gosh Make a YouTuber imagine. Challenge. fall asleep on a roller coaster challenge Is it possible I'm sure there's some coasters it's possible. Like, we talked about um, Pepsi Orange Streak at Nickelodeon Universe, which is basically just a really fast monorail. (laughs) You could probably fall asleep on that one. (laughs) But a coaster that goes upside down six times, yeah, not so much. Oh, no. Could do it. Well, passing out is different from uh, falling asleep, Mm -hmm. so... Well, thank you for tuning into this episode of the podcast. Yeah, be sure to go and give Afterburn a ride for its 25th anniversary season. It's pretty exciting. So, didn't scare anybody off. 
Why would we scare anybody? <laughs> Were we that bad? Were we... <laughs> Uh, be sure to go and follow us on social media as we mentioned at the top of the show you can find us on Instagram and Twitter slash X um, and you can see all these pictures and videos that uh, we look, I was showing Haley throughout today's episode um, also if you like that episode be sure to give us a 5 star rating on whatever platform you may be listening on uh, it helps other people find the podcast in the future and uh, we just really appreciate that so and uh, yeah, be sure to tune in for, uh, in a couple weeks talking about another really famous coaster and i'm not gonna spoil it but uh it's uh it's a big one it's one that people have been talking about for a long time and mm. uh it's a record breaker mm. it's exciting it'll be a it'll be a fun episode so it's also episode 40 so kind of a Ooh. small small milestone episode for us so oh i'm but, uh, excited for episode 50 we gotta mm-hmm. do a big one I, i've already got episode 50 planned wow. i've got a good one is it I've this got, season it is this season. Yep, <gasps> it'll be sometime in the fall, I think. We should so. do something special. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So I already know what coaster we're gonna talk about, but we'll have to figure out so, how we want to do episode fifty. So, well, that is all we have for today's episode, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.